your video for a long time and um, just recently decided to go ahead and, and take the time to do it. So uh, what I want to make a video about is basically my uh, life story um, in regards to donor egg infertility. Um, I am fortunate enough to be in the industry um, right now and able to work with patients or recipients um, that are currently going through it. And it's just what I absolutely love doing. And um, while I'm, you know, at my, at my job and, and when I'm discussing, um, you know, talking to the recipients and, um, you know, he hearing their concerns and, um, you know, helping them find egg donors is what, really what I do. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll actually uh, t tell them my story. And I get so often people, when I do tell them my story, they say, you know, Tanya, you should totally do a video or do, you should get your story out a little bit more because um, it just made me feel so good. It made me feel so much better. And um, God, that's just, I just, that's why I do what I do. And that's why, um, why I love my job so much. Um, just kind of feeling like I make a difference. And so I, I thought I would go ahead and, and put this video out and um, maybe reach more people who are struggling with infertility. And, um, you know, all infertility is, is very, very difficult. But um, when you get to a point where you're told that you need to use an egg donor, it is extreme. It's about, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to go through, especially as a female and a female who your whole life, you know, if you're like me, I knew from the time I was a little tiny girl that I wanted to be a mother and it was not in my cards to not be. So, um, when I, when I was told that, uh, I wasn't just going to be able to have babies like everybody else, pretty stinking devastating and um, didn't didn't know how to handle it, didn't have anybody to really talk to. I had a very supportive family, friendships and, and things, but it's just not the same. You know, it's, it's not the same as really um, talking to somebody who really knows what, you know, can empathize with you and really knows what you're going through and the crazy questions that goes on in your mind. Um, you know, things that, things that, you're almost, I mean, you're almost embarrassed to, act, to talk to people about because if you haven't gone through it, you don't really, um, you don't really understand, you know, and some of the questions and things going through your mind are, are, um, they're just real, you know, they're real. And I guarantee you that anybody that has to go through it are thinking all of the same things and having all the same concerns that you're having. So anyway, let's just get started. I, I was thinking what, you know, how should I, how should I, go into the whole uh, story and I think I'll just start from the beginning of um, when I got married. I got married in 99 and um, no longer married. Um, so ex-husband now. So when I'm referring to my husband, he's actually my ex-husband now. Um, but um, got married in 1999. I was 29 years old. Um, we pretty immediately because I mean, not that that's old, but it was, I was pushing 30 and um, I was ready to start trying. And so we really weren't married, but about six months before we started trying to, to conceive, um, you know, about six more months um, and nothing happening. I took a little visit to my um, GYN doctor and just told him what was going on and my concerns. And, you know, the very, very first thing, anybody who's gone through this knows the very, very first thing that you do is, um, they took the sperm analysis on uh, my husband at the time. And um, actually it came back, he's probably gonna hate me for saying this, but it came back low sperm count, low motility. There was some problems with it. And so, um, of course that's not, that's easily uh, not a problem once you get into extreme, um, you know, infertility procedures and stuff like we were getting ready to do. But at the time it was enough to immediately, um, he referred us to an infertility specialist. So that's what we did. We didn't mess around, we went to the infertility specialist and um, 
started doing IUIs and we did the blood work and everything. And so, oh my goodness, I, I don't even, I don't even honestly know how many IUIs I did. Um, 10, maybe 12. And immediately when you start doing that, you know, they give you Clomid. So it's all very, very uh, basic, you know, the beginning stages of infertility. And so they start, I started taking Clomid and, um, and then they gave me a little bit more Clomid and I quickly uh, realized that I just wasn't producing um, eggs. And um, I would get very, very minimal eggs for the um, medication that I was taking and for my age. I was, I, was, I was very young, you know, at the time. I was only 30. So, um, so the sperm problem quickly became a egg problem and, and fast. And I still continued to um, do IUIs. I did so many IUIs and, and you know, the, the entire time I was doing them, the infertility doctor was starting to push me into a different direction and talking a little bit more about um, egg quality and um, you know what makes sense at some point you know although the IUIs weren't nearly as expensive as going into straight IVF treatments still um, you know I was putting a lot of money out and um, I could I was pretty good read of, of the doctor and he I could tell he was definitely wanting me to move forward with donor eggs so he pushed he, he put that out there into the air for me several times and I ignored it um, finally decided that I just my body needed a break so I just took about six months to do some soul searching quite honestly um, just relax everybody you know everybody tells you Oh, you get pregnant if you just relax and stop worrying about it. So I thought, you know what I am? I'm just going to do that. I, I'm exhausted. So I did. I, I just took about six months off and, um, and didn't do anything. And then um, I just, I was, I just decided, you know what? I'm going to get my knowledge. I'm going to, what if this doctor didn't know? You know didn't know what he's talking about so i ended up going to i think every infertility doctor in the valley i decided i was going to go visit and uh tell them what i'd gone through uh the medication i was taking the results from the medication eggs were falling apart and you know basically every one of the physicians that i saw uh were, were saying the same thing and that that was that um I just needed to move forward with um, with egg donor, so I did. I mean, like I have to back up a little bit. I did try after the IUIs. I did try a ZIFT cycle with my own eggs. Um, I don't even know if they do ZIFT anymore. I don't think that they do, but it was basically IVF. But instead of, I believe it was um, instead of transferring the uh, the eggs on day five. Um, into the uterus, they they transfer them into the fallopian tubes, and then so that they had like a natural process of going through the tubes to give your uterus time to get all fluffy and, and ready for implantation once the embryo got there. So I think that they transfer on day three instead of day five. Don't quote me on that, but something like that. So I did a ZIF procedure, and I also did um, two IVFs with my own eggs. So. As you can tell, I just really was in denial. I, I just didn't want to hear it and um, continued to do what I wanted to do. So finally, I um, I decided that I was going to move forward with donor egg, and that was that. And to be honest, I tell this to recipients that I work with all the time, and that is that point right then when I decided that I was going to move forward with using an egg donor was the hardest part. As soon as I got past it, I mean, as soon as I decided and said it out loud and said, I'm going to just go for it and, and, and use a donor, then everything just got easier for me. It just got easier for me. Um, so I made my appointment, um, you know, back, then um, there, we didn't have like egg banks and, and you know, 
thousands of beautiful young donors with profiles online to look at and um, you know that we just didn't have that so I went to my local um, the uh, local infertility clinic that I decided to go with and um, they had a small donor selection and I'm a tall woman I'm uh, so that was really important to me of, of anything I was trying to find a donor who was also tall like me so um, you know it I basically went with the tallest uh, girl that was an opportunity that it was an option for me and um, I literally um, transferred two embryos um, my doctor felt that I was young enough at the time and healthy enough that um, that wasn't too risky so we transferred two embryos and the very very first time that I uh, went forward using a donor and transferred I got pregnant with my twins and I was I just can't even tell you how elated I was um, it uh, it was just you know not only was I pregnant you know after all of this but I was pregnant with two babies and um, I just I just wasn't I couldn't be any happier I just remember I get chills thinking about that uh, that phone call that I got that I was finally pregnant and that they, it looked like it was twins so anyhow to kind of like speed it up just a little bit I um, had a fantastic pregnancy I um, stayed healthy and I felt great um, all the way up to about 34 weeks I had to be hospitalized um, doing some preterm labor and so they gave me some tributylene and uh, magnesium I believe and uh, to prolong the pregnancy a little bit and it worked for me it was pretty miserable uh, in the hospital for about a week but then I got to go home for another week and a half or so and um, ended up having the twins uh, at 37 weeks and two days which is full term for twins um, they they were so healthy. I got to bring both of them home from the hospital after two days. I mean, everything was great. It, you know, absolutely no complications or no problems whatsoever. I was so, so, so happy and busy and um, it, 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 things were good, just great. So to fast forward just a little bit, let's fast forward about five months later. And um, as you can imagine, I am pretty stinking busy um, with feeding two babies and fortunately I was um, in a position where I was able to stay at home uh, for them you know when they were a little tiny like that so I was able to stay at home but um, man it was busy busy times kind of kind of just a blur really it was just it was so busy and, and so fun and just my hands were full and um, I don't know this particular morning I remember and don't think I'm crazy because I don't ever have like crazy dreams or anything like that. I really never do. But I woke up one morning, twins were about five months and they were just barely starting to sleep through the night. And um, I woke up and I had had a, um, just a really vivid dream. And the dream was about a little boy and he was about two years old and he had this darling white hair and blue eyes and, um, just sweet little personality. I mean, I just was in love with this little boy. And like I said, I don't normally remember my dreams. And I, I just woke up and just sat there for a minute thinking, and I remembered the name. I was calling him by a name. And um, I just remember, th I mean, it was such a great little dream that I remember thinking, oh shoot, I, I really like that name. I should have named the t one of the twins this name, you know. Um, so then, you know, I started hearing the babies, I'd run upstairs, uh, you know, started getting busy with my day. And then um, my husband at the time called and um, he said, hey, I'm actually gonna be in the neighborhood for um, um, for lunch, you know, would you, uh, would you like me to pick you up a little something to eat and bring it over for lunch? I'm like, yeah, you know, anytime, anytime that there was a, you know, adult person in the area to come see me and keep me sane, I was all over it. So anyway, he, um, he says, is there a, um, anyway, let me, let me speed up a little bit. So I was going to get in the shower and um, that same day, and I had these sliding glass mirrored doors right in front of my shower. So 
I um, I go to open, you know, I get my clothes off and I go to open the, the, the shower door and I just happen to glance over at the side, my side profile and I see that my belly looks like it's, you know, hard and sticking out and and I thought, oh my gosh, I look like I'm pregnant. You know, this is crazy. And um, so I got out of the shower and I called um, my husband and I said, hey, would you swing by Walgreens and since you're coming home for lunch and grab a pregnancy test? And then as soon as it came out of my mouth, I'm like, did I really just say that? You know, because his response was, completely busting out cracking and laughing at me you know he's like what are you talking about because I can't tell you how many you know up to that point how many over-the-counter pregnancy tests that we had purchased and came back negative so um anyway just given the situation he thought that was pretty funny but he said are you serious and I said you know what I I don't know I mean like I just had this crazy dream all in the same day you know I had this crazy dream and then I go to get in the shower and I just feel like I look like I'm huge and I, I just don't know what's going on so he does he comes home for lunch and um he goes and brings lunch and sits it on the back patio and he, he gives me the pregnancy test so i go in the potty and do my thing and just leave it there you know and then i, I go out and eat with him he gets ready to leave and he says um hey did you uh did you look you know and i'm like oh yeah no i didn't look so i went in there and i looked at that pregnancy test and um it was pop. I never even seen a positive print. So I have to go and I get the box and I'm looking at it and making sure that the plus means that I'm pregnant. And I, the overwhelming um, feeling of emotions that I was, that I went through at that moment were, um, it was just, it was surreal. It was the craziest feeling I've ever had. And I didn't know I was, I didn't know if I was so, elated because and I was happy because I was I mean I was happy um so happy um or if I was so scared because I was already so overwhelmed with these two babies and trying to keep up with the new motherhood of that and feeling like a failure half the time when I was trying to do that you know and then finding out that I was pregnant but you know what when I when I go back and I, I, I think about it, the, the thing for me, and I really didn't even talk about it because I'm one of those people that feel like that, you know, I don't want to ever put something out there. I don't ever like to put it out there if, uh, if it's not good, you know, but in the back of my mind, I think that after being told by so many doctors and going through so much that my eggs were rotten, you know, I had bad yeah. eggs and, um, I just, I think somewhere in the back of my mind, I thought, oh my God, something's going to be wrong. I mean, something's wrong with my eggs. How can I be pregnant after all of this, you know? And um, I really, it took me, I was so scared to get too excited about, about being pregnant with my youngest because I just was so scared that it was really into halfway through my pregnancy where I finally got to a point where I could relax and just think, you know what, everything is everything is great, everything's going good, you know? And I tell you what, I have three, uh, three boys, and um, they are, and still are, the healthiest kids and babies ever. I mean, all three of them are just, I mean, I'm so incredibly blessed with um, my life and, um, and my children and, how I got them, you know? People say all the time, maybe if you just waited and you jumped the gun, and no, 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 I didn't jump the gun. Um, you know, I think that everything does happen for a reason, but I am convinced that if I had not moved forward and used a donor to get pregnant initially with my twins, um, that I would have never conceived again. Um, you know, they say that you're the most fertile right after you have babies. And I think that that, was, that stands true for me as well. And I, I don't know that it really matters so much how you get pregnant, um, but my, I think that my hormones and, and I was obviously uh, very fertile and uh, all of a sudden got to get pregnant and had a very normal, awesome child out of the whole deal. And so um, 
And yeah, that's my super unique story. And I do have to tell you that my twins are 16 now and, um, and my youngest is 15. So it's been such a journey and of emotions and um, things that go through my mind. And, um, you know, there's just, from the, from the, before I decided to be an egg donor to even today, I, I think of things and, and I, I think, okay, what if, what if this and what if that? And, um, but I tell you <laughs> that the one thing, there's lots of things that I wouldn't do anything over again, but I tell you what, that choosing to use a donor and, and getting my twins that way was the best decision that I've ever, ever, ever made, ever. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm no longer um, with their father. That's not a problem. You know, I mean, there, there's just so many questions that I wanted to do this video because I want to be able to answer all of the crazy questions that are going through your mind if you're having to go through this um, and all of the stages, you know, I mean, starting from making the decision to do it, um, to do I tell people, do I tell my family, do I tell the kids, you know, um, all of these things are very personal decisions, but I, I do have the experience of, of the ups and downs of all of it and um, the knowledge to be able to just, you know, share that information with you if, if you want it. So um, I can tell you that the dream that I had of my, um, my, that little boy was my third son at two years old. It was him. I remember it and I'll never forget it. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny how things happen. But um, anyhow, I'm going to wrap it up to um, just let you know that, like I said, I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. I simply, but I, I'm so happy and excited that I do get to um, work in the industry. I actually um, help people find donors and, um, and help them, you know, through that whole process. And I just love what I do. And I invite you to um, reach out to me if you have any questions about anything. That's why I'm doing this. And um, yeah, I just, um, I'm glad I finally did it. So I hope it's helpful. I hope that you reach out to me and let me know if you have any questions and um, what's on your mind. And like, there's no question that's not a legitimate question. And I can guarantee you, um, somebody has asked it already and I've probably uh, felt it already myself. So please reach out. I'm so glad I could do this. I hope that um, I hope that it was helpful. And um, you know, do what you love, love what you do. Don't sit around and wait for something to happen. If you know that you've gone through so much and that you're you're probably down this path, don't wait. Don't wait for you know, approval from people or, um, you know, just, you know, just make it happen for you. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.